Hello, welcome to another segment of the 30 Minutes with Jesus. And today we are just going to get right into it without wasting much of your time by appreciating our Maker for making it possible for us to be counted among the living today. Um, you may want to close your eyes at this point. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, ancient of days, the King of kings, the I am that I am, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, we worship and exalt your holy name. Father, we thank you because we are alive today because of your mercies. Father, we thank you because we are alive today because you chose to keep us to your, for your glory. Father, today, O oh Lord, as we are about to share your word, your will amongst ourselves, speak through me, use me as your oracle to speak to the hearts of the people that they may in turn seek your face, O oh Jehovah. And those who haven't yet known you, O oh Jehovah, may seek you and find you while they still can. Today, O oh Lord, we ask that you breathe upon your word. We ask, O oh Jehovah, that your presence may be with us. Drive this whole teaching today, O King of glory, that it may bring glory to your name and your alone. As you are the peace restorer, you will restore peace in each and every heart of ours. In Jesus' name, Father, anything that want to say otherwise to the proclamation of the gospel of Yeshua and Mashiach, that other power is a liar, and we command it to die by the power of the Holy Ghost. We command that other power contending for the gospel. Ah, contending, contending for the faith of the people. We command that power to die in the name of Jesus. Father, help us with your power, with your endorsement, with your support and your empowerment to depopulate hell in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So folks, um, I'm going to use this opportunity to say that um, the, 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 the nation's praise or worship was so amazing oh my god i hope you guys that are in abuja enjoyed it and uh, for those who could not attend well i'm sorry you missed a whole lot i wish i was there i would have been there live but from here we felt the presence of god in fact there was a time i think when the two men that, that came from america and the pastor himself, our daddy in the Lord, was um, singing. I, I, as if my eyes opened and I saw the Lord, I just saw the golden steps and the feet coming down. So I was like, is this a film trick or is just me or my imaginations? And then after a short while I've seen that, I just saw that, sorry. Our dad in the Lord began to say that the Lord is here, the Lord is here, the Lord is here. So I was like, okay, uh, what I saw was not, a, it was not a film trick. It was actually what I saw. So anyway, what I'm saying here is that um, the whole program, the whole idea and the whole concept, <sighs> nation's worship was brilliant and the, the move of God was so powerful and we over here could feel it like strongly, you know, and I really, really, really thank God that we were able to connect to see and to, to tap into what the Lord is doing in that commission. So without wasting time, today's topic is, uh, is what the Holy Spirit put in my heart weeks ago, which I have written that he gave me about, um, this is where I put them, by the way. He gave me about uh, how many topics. Look at them. This is how I wrote them down. 
uh, okay first was uh, be wary of the one who can keep both the body and the soul and then peace restore which is today's topic and then how to get God's attention and then the battle the Lord's battle in Egypt and then the fifth one things that are due for judgment so yeah that's my little box where I put them yeah so anyway today's topic is called the peace restore the the layman described restorer as someone who repairs or renovates a building or work or rehabilitates a person or whatever then walk act walk of act um example to return it from its uh to return it to its original condition you know maybe it was let's say it was good initially or perfect initially and something tainted it that's corrupted it and then this now helps to re a piece a restorer now helps to restore that particular thing to its original condition so it also says or a person who brings back or re-establish a previous right practice or situation or something that returns a person or a thing to its former condition just like i said so let's look at what the bible has to say regarding today's topic which is also our foundation as scripture in the book of acts chapter 3 from verse 20 from verse 19 to 21 so i'm going to be reading from the king james version and i'm going to be really fast because i have taken seven almost seven seven minutes out of it so repent ye therefore and be converted and that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive unto the times of restitution so keep that word in your heart restitution is also like a restoration so of all things which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began praise the lord that is our anchor scripture or our foundation our scripture so why are we looking at this topic today often we have always had this notion that when a good ruler rules the people rejoice even the bible tells us so you know in the book of proverbs chapter 29 verse 2 the Bible tells, I'm still reading King James Version, the Bible tells us that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear it, rule, the people mourn. So today the Lord wants us to take a closer look at who truly is this righteous, whom only his rule can restore peace to all, that's to all, both rich and poor, both small and great. Praise the Lord. So by a way of introduction, we are here today in his presence to understand. What are we here to understand? We are here to understand who peace in its essence is. To, we are here to understand, number one, who peace in its essence is. And number two, to understand where restoration of peace emerged from. Three, to understand how not to look to human beings for peace restoration, but to look to God. And four, to understand that peace is not for all. That is, number one, to understand that there are those who will enjoy this peace despite seeing turbulent, turbulent situation around them. And two, to understand that peace does not belong to some categories of people. So, and finally, which is number five, to understand that only God can restore peace to you, to your family, to your community, to the nations and all the world, the whole world in general. So, these are five points we will be looking at today by his mercies. Praise the Lord. So number one, understanding who peace is, who peace in its essence is. Let's open our Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. 
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So often this message is read during Christmas, which we all know. There is more to this passage that is beyond the Christmas message because I perceive in my spirit that this message talks about our Messiah, his humanity, his, div his divinity, his humanity and his divinity. This message also talks about the government and the rulers of this world, both past, that's both past before Messiah came and then that is before his first coming and then present now and then future when Messiah will return uh, the second coming so um this this passage also talks about the government and the rulers of this world both past and present and future would try so hard to go against him and what he stands for but they will not prevail it also talks about his essence his beauty that is beyond measure his wisdom his knowledge his understanding that no one have ever seen or encountered so that is why it says he is the great counselor so there is no better strategist or advisor or planner than him and he, his strength you know his everlasting nature the passage talks about his strength his everlasting nature as he is the self-existing one and um, his unending and undying love his quality for having family uh, attributes this is to show us where the idea of family originated from and the and finally he he is peace in its essence that is the prince of peace which is the person of jesus praise the lord hallelujah so number two what we're going to uh, look at here is understanding where restoration of peace emerged from where it came from like who had that idea of it who where did it come from let's open our bible to the book of Isaiah. who even thought that the word needs restoration you know the idea where it's already because i believe in my heart that everything came from somewhere it is only god that did not come from anywhere because he is the self-existing one but i believe in my heart that everything comes from somewhere or everybody comes from somewhere there's an origin to everything that's my belief you it might not be yours so so um let's open our bible to the book of Isaiah 11 from verse 4 to sorry from verse 1 to 4 and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is the Messiah now. They're talking about this peace restorer. They're telling us his lineage. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Though his lineage is he's from above, but his earthly lineage is from the root, from the stem of Jesse, which is the the the, the, the uh, king david's father so um and the spirit verse 2 it says the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. We have heard the introduction of whom in essence is peace and where it, 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 peace came from. Peace came from above. Peace came, and that is the, 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 the divinity uh, aspect of peace restorer came from above and the humanity uh, the side of of the peace restorer came uh, came from the stem of jesse which is the father of king david and then um in uh, from uh, yeah from isaiah 9 verse 6 we've heard that 
that is where a piece came from and how all the notable criteria he possesses now isaiah 11 from verse 1 to 4 tells us where the where he emerged from all that shall rest and all that shall rest upon him and how he will smite uh, the earth with the rod of his mouth which is the spoken word of god and the breath of his lips which tells us two notable things one the spoken word of god where power lies that is or seats that is to tell you the seat of power and what was used to create the whole universe that was the spoken word of god and then so if he spoke it into existence into being that means he can also unspeak it into not being in existence if he cannot since he spoke it into being so he has the power to to speak to unspeak it by the way he spoke it in and he has the power to unspeak it so um now this also means in the garden of eden there was peace before sin you know because he spoke it into existence and when sin entered peace uh, when sin entered peace was lost in the garden the point here is he is responsible for the restoration of peace therefore in this light we now know where restoration of peace emerged from so understanding number three now understanding how not to look to human beings for peace restoration but god you know so let's open our bibles to the book of romans chapter 8 verse 6 for to set the mind on the flesh is death but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace i think this is very ex very explanatory not to put our trust on human beings because they disappoint they fail they mislead then finally it, they bring death you know how do they disappoint and fail look at the nation nigeria today most put their most had put their trust in the 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 outgoing president now uh, buhari a lot of people put their trust in him that he will do better than all the presidents that we've had and he he not only disappointed not only did he fail to deliver but brought deaths the death nigeria has ever experienced since nigeria was in Nigeria who has been considered Nigeria. Oh my God. We have not seen it until this period that uh, Buhari was the, pre is the president, you know. So I, I'm even putting him in the past because I believe he's going, you know. So, and, you know, so he did not deliver, rather, he brought deaths, a turmoil, chaos. That's what he, he delivered. So if someone without the fear of God in him, what do you expect? He gives you what he has. He doesn't have peace. So he gives you what he has, and which is chaos and death and bitterness. That's what he has. So, um, and then um, the message here for Nigeria or any other nation currently in election period now, what God is saying to these nations is, Trust God to lead and not a leader to lead. In so doing, God will by himself appoint the one after his own heart that will lead shortly before he returns. But if you put your trust in the leader, God will fold his arms and his hands and, 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 and watch that nation fail. So I pray that we as Nigerians will trust God to lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another example which can be likened onto this scenario is um, what transpired in the story of um, King Saul and King David. You know, when, when the people of Israel were asking the prophets, Samuel, 
that they need a leader. They need a leader by all means. They need a leader just like the pagan people who had have a king. And Samuel went to the prophet Samuel went to God and say, Well, this is what they are saying. This is what your people are saying. The Lord said, Look, Samuel, don't be angry. It's not you they've rejected. They've rejected me. So for me, that verse is the most painful a verse in the Bible. That's for me. That this is God feeling isolated, feeling socially excluded. So I feel there's this thing going on. You know about so this is the same thing you can apply it to so when they when you start are demanding for a leader you are now saying lord you cannot rule over me you know so but if they had trusted god to rule so wouldn't have been there in the first place they would have waited until the lord put david there as the rightful king you know you know as the rightful heir to the throne you know, so that is the same thing the Lord is saying to us to trust in him, to lead us in trusting in him. Then the Lord may decide to appoint his own person, but not to put that trust in the person. And then the person will fail because the person doesn't have the power to deliver. It's only the Lord that has the power to deliver. So um, that's the message for those who are trusting God for a good leadership in their nation. An example of that is Nigeria. So how do people mislead? Look at the former American President Obama. How he sold Israel out to their enemies after all the deception making Israel at the time to believe that he was their friend. Please Google it and verify this story, okay? So uh, I don't want to even go in detail because it's really angry. As in, sorry, it's really annoying. So, um... Um, it's annoying what he did, you know, if Israel was thinking that he's with them, you know, but he sold them out to their enemies. So, uh, you should Google it out and find out the detail. So, uh, not like Trump, you see, people, people may not like, um, uh, or may not approve of Mr. Trump, but the guy delivers, you know, and he is likened to a Cyrus of our time. You know, because some of the American people who are truly serving God with trusting God and wanting the old ways back. That is the foundation on which that nation was built upon. And God gave them a Cyrus to lead on behalf of, 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 of him until he re, on his behalf until he returns. The point here is to look to God, to lead. And he will. That's the point here now. This is what the Bible has to say regarding all we talked about in in this book of um, in now in the book of Psalm nine verse seventeen. This is what the Bible is saying: the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. So don't forget God. That's a message. Don't forget. Let God ask God to lead. That's what the message is. He wants you to know that he alone can restore peace. That's what today's message is about. It's not by... I know in Nigeria, for example, Atiku is a nice guy. He's generous, yes. But do not trust him like everybody trusted Buhari, a Fulani man who now... Because we know that Fulani people are very conservative. So I know also that... Atiku is a very generous, but do not put your trust in him. Just look up to Jehovah, for Jehovah to appoint whom he wants to lead that nation so that peace can be restored. At least the peace that his people will enjoy until the peace restorer himself, you know, makes his appearance. So, and it says here, if my people in Second Chronicles 7, from 14 to 16 he said if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways ways then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and will heal their land so it's the same message he's sending so as nigerians we need this honestly looking up to god we really need it you know trusting god we need it because it is a beautiful country full of great potentials you know, and very powerful people of God. That is the only country, anyone from anywhere, from anywhere in this world that can come and feel homely 
and not feel different because that nation, we are full of hospitality. It's a beautiful nation. And God bless Niger. That's all I'm going to say. So, so in Psalm 22, verse 28, this is what it says. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. So God said to me in my sleep with the voice of his servant, Dr. Pastor Paul Enyeche, uh, just last night stroke, early hours of this morning, uh, that he is the one Godding. So I'm sure our daddy will understand this word because I've never heard it anywhere, but I heard it in my sleep, between sleep and awake. He said, he, he said the Lord said, was saying with the voice of his servant, I didn't see the face, but the voice of his servant said, he said, I uh, he say he is the one Godin. That is G O D I N G. He is the one Godin, uh -huh. and doesn't need an assistant to God uh, in Godin. So in in being a God, he doesn't need an assistant. That's what it means. And God does not need a deputy God on earth. He doesn't, and he is very much okay with the way he is and the way he does his things. Thank you very much. That's what. I got this morning so number four understanding that peace is not for all you know it's not for all one to understand that there are those who will enjoy peace despite seeing troubling situation and ar around them john chapter 14 verse 27 tells us peace i live with you my peace i give unto you not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So uh, these are those who the peace of the Lord belongs to. That is both here and after. Uh, those that are candidates of his mercy, like you and I, that is, that is those who truly love him, believe in him and, and obey him. Do you think that... Uh, there won't be troubling times in the world. Of course there will be. That is why he made emphasis of my peace. He could have just said, peace be with you. But he emphasized it, putting, attaching his essence in that peace. Saying, my peace I give to you, not as the word giveth. Because the peace the word giveth is just for a short moment, not a long time thing. So um, this is also telling us that only the Messiah can give such peace that will endure turbulence, okay, or tornadoes or hurricanes or whatever. So, two, to understand that peace does not belong to some categories of people. Yeah, in Isaiah 48 verse 22, it says, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Who are the wicked? They are those who hate the true God, Jehovah, those who oppress the weak, the poor, the meek, the, the, the people of God, those who kill, those who steal, those who destroy, those who, who cheat, those who bear false accusation, and the list goes on and on. Hence, these are the people who will never know peace except they repent, you know. So you can just fit them into the list is long. So this is just a summary of those who will never know peace. Those who stalk people, those who abuse people, they will never know peace until they repent. So number five, understanding that only God can restore peace to you and your family, your community, your nation, and the world in general. Let's open our Bible to Isaiah.